Next is setting uh, standard setting and post color determination. This simply could be seen as the process of bringing together a group of subject matter experts, people who are knowledgeable and experienced in that field, to sit down and take a look at the test, having taken the test themselves, and then agree on the minimum level of knowledge and skills that are required for someone to be deemed to have passed that particular exam. For, some, for the person who has taken that test to be deemed to be qualified to practice in that profession. In as much as a professional, uh, you know, a professional certification is involved. So you bring the subject matter expert together and they sit down and they determine what is the minimum level of knowledge and skills uh, that a person seeking to practice in that field uh, is supposed to possess. Then we have the next one, which is the administration of the tests itself and scoring. Um, there are various forms, various uh, methods that could be used in administering a test. Uh, the very common one is the paper type administration. However, as I mentioned earlier, for a professional exam that you, 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 you hope to have as many candidates taking the exam from all over the world or all over the country is concerned, you are likely expected to make your tests one that is available on the internet and that is also able to provide scores to the testees as soon as they are done taking that test. And uh, such administration definitely will require uh, some level of proctoring just to ensure that that same test and even the scores that will be generated from the test are reliable, accurate, and fair. So this is what you do in test administration. So these uh, points that we brought forward are the basic steps that are involved in examination development process. So if you are looking into, uh, you know, developing ex an examination for your for your credential, uh, you please bear in mind that at least these are some of the things. I mean, these are the basic steps that are involved in examination development process. Next, we would like to look then at the test items themselves. What a test item is, uh, and then I use the word uh, anatomy, or if you'd like to say the, the, the parts of a test item. The first is the stem. First of all, an item is a unit of an exam, which uh, is designed to test or to elicit information regarding the knowledge and skills of a person who has you know, presented himself to take that particular exam. So uh, for a multiple choice test, which is the one we're addressing more, especially because um, we have said that it is probably the easiest way you can cover a whole lot of content and then uh, do a very objective scoring. It, is, uh, it refers to the statement or a leading statement uh, that an item has. It, it is that one that contains the task that is expected of a testee to tackle. Um, if you ask a student that is uh, studying electronics, if you ask him to, if you just say, which of the following is the definition for a uh, diode, for instance, that's part of the test that presents the task 
or let me say that part of the item that presents the task to the HST is what we refer to as the step. At all times, this is, you know, uh, the definition for it. Of course, uh, so you can you can come up with any other word you I mean, uh, any other sort of words you would use to describe it. But eventually, you will arrive at the fact that the part of a test that represents a task is what is referred to as this step. This can be in just words. It can be graphically, you know, presented. It can be tables. What do, it has what it must be presented in a way that the trustee is able to clearly understand what the task is expecting him to do. Then the next part of a, a test item is what is referred to as the key. Now the key is simply the correct response. You have a list of options, or we could also call them alternatives in a test. Option A, option B, option C, option D, to as many options that you have the time and the resources to, to you know, to uh, include in your test. All of those are referred to as options, including the key itself. All of them are referred to as options or alternatives. Now, the in the alternatives that you have presented, only but one is supposed to be the correct response. That one that is the correct response is referred to as the key in a test. The next is the structures. The, the structures are those other possible answers or possible options or possible alternatives that you have supplied in your test items that are clearly incorrect. Now, um, there is there is one of the things that one one of the things I like to bring to the fore each time a discussion. I mean, discussion on um, item generation or test item development is brought to the table is the fact that your, your distractors should not only be wrong, but they should possess the capacity to make someone who has not mastered that content to select them for their answer. What I mean by that is, um, your answer, I mean, your uh, distractors should obviously be wrong, However, they should look as if they were the correct ones to someone who has not mastered that content. Now, in a school setting, for instance, a person who, let's say, did not attend a class when the professor was uh, presenting or teaching that particular topic and has not read any material relating to that topic. However, is a student in that particular classroom a, the instructor should make him or her believe that it is the correct option. All right, so this is uh, one of the ways you can you can uh, make sure that your distractors work very well. And uh, to to come up with distractors, what I think one of the best things to do is you assemble a group of people who are within the population that should be taking that test. You will make them take the test. You would you will just have only the stems of your questions and ask them to write out the correct answers uh, for the for the questions or the items that you have. Now, obviously, a lot of folks will supply to you some options that are not right. But for the mere fact that they are, you know, uh, they are members of that class or a school setting, or that they are practitioners, they are professionals in that particular industry. Um, 
who probably have been trained and may have done some level of practice, even though they may not have been um, as experienced as you expect, whatever answer they supply to you, such answers, you can keep them aside and you may like to take a tally to see how many of them were, uh, how many, are, okay, which of the, uh, let me put it this way, which three were, were, were suggested the most by your SMEs or your students or whatever group of people you are dealing with. It is those ones that you are now going to use as your distractors for the mere fact that they brought them, they supplied them. And not only one person or two or three persons makes us suggestions, it tells you that if a test, uh, if that particular item is presented to them as, uh, you know, the, the distractors, there is a high possibility that some of the testees will go for such options. 